John Kramer, claims that when the universe was young, there were sound waves, very low frequency, which uh, were playing their music like that. stop. <laughs> you better don't hear the continuation because you will be really scared. And uh, <laughs> Adam Burroughs, just uh, I think it was two years ago when you emailed me uh, sounds from supernovae going simulations. So he, he discovered that apparently when you, supernovae explodes, I'm not sure if these were type 2 supernovae, type 1a, type 2, okay. Type 2 supernovae which come from the explosion of massive stars. So he discovered that you may have sounds, so it's not just the explosion that you see in, in, in all frequencies, but it's also accompanied by sounds. And it's quite amazing because, you know, in astronomy we always see things happening, but there are no sounds. Many of my colleagues use uh, data which is coming from light variations of stars, which are obviously partially and maybe f uh, due to the variations of, uh, due to the pulsations because the sound waves also produce light variations. The problem is we don't know theoretically, models do not give any clear relationship between light and pressure variations. So we cannot easily say the amplitude of light variation, how to transfer this into pressure variation or a velocity variation and to produce a sound. This is a very serious problem. It, it, it is not answered in models at least. And theoretically, the, the relation between intensity and pressure is very complex. And this is a proof that for some stars, I have an example star which I was observed with Kepler, the light variation, and transformed into sound. And for the same star, we have a Doppler data, which is velocity variations, which is easily related to pressure, and again converted into the sound. So you can see the difference between these two sounds. This is the light, and this is coming from the velocity data, which is more precise. Basically, what we are doing, uh, imagine you are observing on the Earth a volcano on the Mars, and there is an atmosphere. Now, you see the volcano effect, but you don't hear it being on the Earth. Now imagine you have a very powerful physics, computers and everything, and you know how to model this. So using the data, spectroscopy data, uh, which uh, the, the, the effects that the volcano is producing on the upper layers of the atmosphere, right, and the change of the color in the upper layers because of the temperature change, etc. using all this information you can model the sounds that people would hear on the Mars from this volcano. And you are sitting on the Earth and hearing that sound. You can perfectly do that. So this is precisely what we are doing with star sounds. Mm -hmm.